My name is Greg Mysick, and I am the founder of two separate STEM programs. The first is the Young Inventors Showcase, which I run under a nonprofit called the Young Inventors Association of America, whose banner is behind me. The second is a facial composite software that mimics a police sketch art is called Faces. And it's been determined by third parties, uh, validated by third parties as being the best uh, facial composite software for first responders all over the world. It's used in the classroom in many ways. Uh, number one, as a STEM-based crime scene investigation lesson plan. Number two, in uh, after-school programs and also in art departments as a foundation for portrait art. I'm gonna go through a series of videos. Uh, the purpose for this presentation is I'm going to offer both programs which have deep, deep uh, program guides associated with them to your local community. The intent is that we get a major brand to sponsor the donation and well, those funds will be used to put on campus safety events using the face of software and also to underwrite the Young Inventors Showcase program in your schools. Um, and so first I'm gonna introduce the Young Inventors Showcase, uh, which I founded, um, and also the Houston Inventors Association, which I also founded back in 1983, program elements, uh, and then I'll go into faces. First, I'm going to uh, show you the uh, history of the My name is Greg Mysick, and I am the founder of the Houston Inventors Association. Uh, it was formed over 26 years ago. And the story that I kind of want to get out is how we were formed. We were actually an outgrowth of the federal government. The, uh, back in the early 80s, the uh, federal government passed a law forming the Small Business Innovations Research Program, which funded innovation, small business innovation. And uh, becoming aware of that program, I was involved in putting on a conference at the University of Houston at, uh, in February of 1983, and it was co-sponsored by the U.S. Patent Office, by the uh, University of Houston, by the uh, Greater Houston Chamber of Commerce, um, the JCs, Houston JCs, and a number of other organizations. Uh, we had over 400 people attend, and it was such a success that I was kind of given the mandate to take the core attendees and formed the Houston Inventors Association, which I did. We had our first meeting in March of uh, 83 in my office. We had about 30 people show up. I formed the 501c3, the nonprofit, uh, ran the organization once a month meetings out of my office for you know, two or three years. And uh, in about 84, 85, uh, other people got involved and I backed down. And best thing I ever did for the organization because after that, they grew to almost 500 members. Uh, I became a, a founder emeritus, um, had been involved on the, on the periphery for a number of years. In the late 1980s, uh, some of the members uh, got involved and started a Young Inventors Showcase in which uh, they had a citywide competition. It was held in various malls uh, around the city and I got behind that as well and underwrote the annual uh, patent award formed the 501c3 for uh, the Young Inventors Association of America, I think in 1997. And then about two years ago, three years ago, that uh, Young Inventors Showcase was uh, uh, adopted by the Children's Museum of Houston. And the Children's Museum of Houston now sponsors it. The 21st Annual Showcase was held this past May of 2009. And uh, we had 75 kids uh, and children participating, some great inventions. And I, you know, I'd especially like to thank uh, Ken Roddy, who stepped up over 20 years ago to lead the organization. What Ken has brought to the table is the sense of uh, security and safety for the inventor. Uh, it's a place to learn and a place to learn safely. Uh, I want to thank Otto Glazier, who's put this event on today. We've got over 50 inventors, and Otto is becoming a spearhead in uh, outreaching uh, innovation and invention throughout the Houston business community. So special thank you to the, the, the two individuals, uh, uh, Otto and Ken. I'd like to make this a, uh, a special uh, invite to Mayor White and to the uh, elected officials and, and business leaders of Houston. What we have now is a twin pillar, twin pillars of uh, invention. We have the Young Inventors Showcase, and here we have the Houston Inventors Association. Houston can be an exporter of innovation. The Houston brand can be an innovation brand. Getting behind these two organizations and, and events can be the springboard for a national, if not an international, outreach of innovation, 
spearheaded by the Houston business and uh, government community. Uh, next, I'm going to have a video of the um, Young Inventors Showcase Finals, which was the 2009 edition. We had um, that spring, we had about 30 schools, 3,000 kids compete. And as uh, we said in the earlier video, 75 kids made it to the finals. And uh, I'm now going to show you that um, that video. It's about a 13 minute video. That information, you come around right over here and fill that out. But number 42, don't forget that, that's very important. We are at the Children's Museum of Houston, the Kids Hall at the Young Inventors Showcase 2009 21st Annual. What it is, it is a showcase for kids who have invented things. This is Santino, and I am Josh. And this is the water rake. So you tip the water bottle over, and water comes out and it squirts down, so I'm making they're easier to dig. These kids have come from all walks of life. They have all kinds of different interests, socioeconomic backgrounds. They have come together today at the Children's Museum to present their individual inventions. And of course, they're being judged by real scientists, real inventors, and people who are in the process of helping others uh, develop business lines or get patents. We have kids who are second grade through seventh grade. They're out here today showing off their innovations, their inventions, their thoughts, their creative ideas, and how they engineered it all. My partner, Nikki, whenever we curl or straighten our hair, we always burn our ears. So we decided to make something that would help prevent that. You put it over your forehead and your ears, so if the curler or the flat iron happens to actually touch your ear, you can't feel anything. It's called the Burn Be Gone. I've never invented anything before, so this was really fun to do. I think it's really fun to invent. Good morning, Carly. Today you have swim practice at 545. Bye. It's an alarm clock that instead of beeping, it tells you what you have to do that day. And it sometimes does that if you put it too close to the microphone, and so you have to be careful about that. You record the night before, and in the morning it plays you record a message and then you remember, oh, I have to do some team today, or oh, I have to, I have baseball practice after school. We found an alarm clock and a voice recorder. My dad taught me how to solder, and I soldered them together, and it worked on the first try. It really encourages kids to use their imagination. It was an empowerment in the fact that your imagination can come true. You catch this to your catch collar, so tag. And so when they and this is scratching post, so when you go ahead and play the scratching post, it activates the motor. The inventor showcase for us is an opportunity to bring in the entire community to celebrate invention, which is one of our core concepts. We're interested in creating a festival event type atmosphere where kids can express their own inventiveness. The Children's Museum positions itself as a playground for your mind. In fact, we even asked the question, can your mind come out to play? And if there were ever an indicator of what that might look like, it's today at the Children's Museum with the Young Inventor Showcase. And what is phenomenal is seeing children from all walks of life, from all parts of Houston, coming together and focusing on ideas. My invention is a small bag that you clip onto this leash and it carries um, bags to clean up after your dogs. And my problem is that when I take my dogs on the They come up with their own problem, they develop their own solutions, and they get to tinker and experiment and learn things they may not have thought of before. I thought of the automatic sprayer, and then I just thought a way to build it. And I had to use hammers, nails, pipe, duct tape, wood. I thought this one worked, so I tried it. It did work. I'm just excited that he's into this, you know, that, that he, he loves it. It's something he's excited about doing, so I want to support him. All we had to do is take some simple things that got made before, and we can just put them together, and we can make something else that hasn't been invented before. We can have a business, a small business. Our son came home and said he was just really excited about the invention convention and he wanted to tell me all about the opportunities that would be available to him because he had created something. It's natural for children to, to want to compete and it's natural for children to want to create. So I think putting the two together, this is a 
perfect venue to develop that in children. I was really excited to find out that they would be hosted by the Children's Museum because I think it's a way to honor the work that kids have done and it gives the community a chance to come out and see the kinds of things that kids think and do. It's a neat place to put it on display. How did you come up with the idea? Well, my little sister, um, I have a little sister who is always losing her glasses, so I came up with the Bed Buddy, and it's just a little case that you can slide in between your mattress and your box screen or frame of your bed, and it's a really convenient place to store pretty much anything. I'm the president of an invention service company, and so I see inventions all year long. The most common thing that I see inventors do wrong is their invention only does one thing. And it may be, whatever it is, it just does one thing. Yours does multiple things. And that's what I look for. That's what um, that's what Mark This is really my first invention I've ever done. I'm surprised that it turned out this well. That's what retail people like Walmart are looking for. They don't want something that just... It's a wonderful experience for these kids. Obviously, she's having a ball. I'm a kid. It's giving her the opportunity to think about, well, what would be successful? What can I do to make this a better invention? The museum is making her more aware of some of these talents that she has that perhaps she wouldn't have discovered. So congratulations and good luck. Thank good you luck. So my much. pleasure. My pleasure. You know, seeing the quality of inventions and the rigor with which the kids basically pursued the scientific process. It's just extremely impressive and makes me proud of the work that they've done and proud that we're given an opportunity to pursue it. What we really want to be able to do is take it on to a national level and invite other children's museums and maybe science centers to join us in the process so that they can take the model that we've developed um, and possibly under our guidance implement it in their own communities and see the same growth among kids in their community as well. So tell us what you got here. For my son. Now, I used to be very shy, but I see he can even talk in front of the camera and um, talk to judges very intellectually, so I love it. I've seen how I can change other people's lives with what I've made, so, I, so it's really a really good experience, and this is my first time, and I'd like to do it again next year. How much do you think they would cost if, if you had thought about if you were going to sell it? $900 a page. They're coming up with things that are ready to go to market, things that I want. Every year I go through and I look, well, I want that. How do I get that? There are lots of things that are coming out of their brains that are fantastic and, you know, give me a real hope that we're giving kids the impetus to understand that it's part of them and that they can continue it throughout their lives. I think you did a great job and I think any cat would love this. We are, in fact, grooming the future of America. The motor is powered by this battery pack, which is connected to the... These kids are excited about what they've done. They understand the science behind what they did. They understand the engineering that it took, the ingenuity that it took. Oh, that's ironing board. That's ironing board pack. They are creative, thoughtful kids. So you thought about everything, you guarantee. I was very pleased to see what we got today. Some super good inventions. I think there's maybe three or four that I observed that to me have immediate commercial potential. Those kids, they have so much energy and so many good ideas. They put a lot of hard work into this and they did a really good job. The judges are a mixture of different professionals. We have engineers, we have people from the Houston Inventors Association. These are people who have patents or patents pending on inventions. We have patent attorneys and we have people who are more or less venture capitalists. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce Greg Meisner. Uh, this has been a fabulous year. In the late 80s, one of the winners was a little kindergartner who uh, decided that she needed to be able to reach the upper uh, cabinets in the kitchen. So she invented a step stool for kids. We get a patent application offered for free. That was a grand prize. Her parents went ahead and got the patent and we got a call from her parents 15 years later, a thank you, because they had had the initiative of getting a manufacturer to manufacture the step stool, and the royalties paid for her college education. Wow. True story. <laughs> now on to the award. In the pre-K through second grade category, second place goes to Logan Hudson for the automatic sprayer. In first place, 
It is Tamari Garlapati for the Cheeto Shield. <laughs> third grade and fourth grade. In third place, Trey Rumley for the Super Heart Break System. In second place is Tyler Huggins for the Dugout Dumpster. And in first place is Carly Kasayan for the Alarm Assistant. My advice to anyone thinking about doing this would be to basically build a good, really core group of people, um, experts in the community that can help you out. One of the great things about our community is that we have such a strong inventors association. We have such a strong engineering workforce, and we have strong corporations who are very interested in innovation. And so pulling those minds together, then they can help with the building of the event in the community, the communication of the fact that it's available to the community, and also just basically um, making it all happen. The next category is fifth and sixth grade. In third place, Charles Dunn for the Gage Cap. In second place is Isaac Solis for the Shandy. And in first place is Olivia Garcia for the Perfect Bowl. One of the biggest things is collaborating well with the school districts and some teachers and having constant communication with them. And having a smooth schedule, thinking about how many judges you're going to have. We decided to have 20 judges each judge can see about 20 kids. Next category is the 7th through 8th grade. In first place is Ahmad Abilhamid Evan Shagag for Right on Time. And now, the grand prize and the winner of the patent process, Kaylee Hoag and Nikki Foreman for Burn Be Gone. Well, I would love to see what the showcase is for it to go national. For the nationals to be held here at the Children's Museum of Houston with the best of the best in all the age groups, from kindergarten all the way up to eighth grade, vying for multiple things, maybe beyond just simply patents, but also potentially venture capitalists investing in these things. Some creative ideas, not, not so much anyone can really invent anything. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. You know, inventors something that I've been doing for years. We're lucky to have this in the city. You know, it's just allows kids to have a medium by which to show what they've done. I want to try it. Because I want to be a scientist and an inventor. The Children's Museum mission is to transform communities through innovative child-centered learning. There's nothing more innovative than this, there's nothing more child-centered than this, and there's no bigger transformation than teaching kids how to be inventors and how to expand their own minds and how to improve lives, not just their own, but other people's as well. So that was the um, 2009 version. I'm now going to go through a couple of uh, documents. Uh, the first is the program guide that we give out to teachers and schools on how to put on a Young Inventor Showcase. And then the second is a 91-page detailed um, lesson plan, eight-week course that we put together as a direct result of the coronavirus shutdown, which we've decided that it allowed us to move our entire program from a Houston-based on the ground classroom setting to a virtual uh, program uh, in the web. And so we're offering this uh, through our portal to any school uh, in the world. And again, it's 91 pages. And so let's take a look at it. Here is the uh, program guide, which I'll, sh I'll start with. And uh, as you can see, uh, this is our 2014 version. It's a showcase guidelines for uh, parents and teachers. Here's a table of contents. Um, and you can run top to bottom, begin inventor's log, 
you know, step one, get an idea. Step two, make a plan. Step three, build a model. Step four, test the model. Step five, finalize your invention. And then there's elements, uh, how to participate, how to plan your time, judging criteria, contest rules and regulations, uh, display guidelines, display rules and regulations, photo photograph display restrictions, et cetera. And then we have a bibliography that you can go to. Uh, next, I'm gonna show you the detailed um, uh, lesson plan. Here's the program guide. Uh, I'll take you to the um, um, table of contents, and you'll see uh, that we go into much detail. Um, and the lesson plan, the lessons from one through 11, and then the uh, separate lessons on the actual inventing process. There's many pages, as you can see, there's uh, 68 pages in the actual lesson plan, and then we have another 20 pages of resources. A couple of fun little videos. Uh, the first is a one minute video of one of our actual classrooms uh, uh, in the preliminaries. And Mrs. Mueller is very dynamic, uh, gives a very charismatic uh, presentation. Uh, and again, it's only a one minute video. This is a fun little 13 second video. We actually take our young inventors and we go to retirement centers and we give a dog and pony a presentation to uh, these retired people that tremendously enjoy this. So this is only 13 seconds. And there you wave, everybody can wave. Everybody wave, everybody wave. Excellent, everybody's waving, that's good. Uh, next, I'm going to run, run you through a PowerPoint presentation. When we took the Young Inventor Showcase to the web two years ago, we put together a uh, PowerPoint on our plans for the next, um, for the future in terms of how we're going to take this globally. So I'm going to share with you some elements of the PowerPoint. Uh, again, the path to 250, the next 30 years. Fifth, um, and, you know, relative to who, who we are, we're, we're the brainchild of the Houston Inventors Association. This is all volunteer driven. Uh, it's nonprofit. But the point is the shining example of Houston's diversity. If you look at the winners from 2000, and, uh, this was 2015, you can see that we cover every ethnicity, um, every, um, uh, you know, background or, you know, from a, from a global standpoint. Uh, a little bit of looking back. Again, we want to empower the world to next uh, inventors. Uh, we see the YIAA as being a sanctioning body in which if you put a young inventors program out in your community, uh, we will be the sanctioning body. We will be, we'll make sure that you follow the, the guidelines that we've put together um, and that it's, a, it's an improved invention program and the quality control, the quality of execution you know, is critically important.
we see ourselves ushering in a new wave of support. We want to expand, expand our team, create quality requirements for sanctioning, sanction existing programs. Uh, we want to expand internationally, uh, help with financial support, idea to market support, volunteer support, international support. Uh, I want to highlight Sean Gilmore. Uh, he won back in 2015, I believe, with a sleepover bed. And it's a pup tent for two that sits on a single bed with a divider in the middle. Nobody likes to, no kids like to share a, you know, a single bed. But with a, being a tent and a divider in the middle, it's like a camp up. And so he's done extremely well. Uh, his mother got a manufacturer out of China. And uh, he's now paying for, paid for his college education. Uh, so he's one of our one of our big big winners that I wanted to highlight. Collaborating with other programs, we're looking for stakeholders who can take ownership, expand into more schools around the world, and create more alliances with corporations, family foundations, and educational think tanks. I'm going to end this uh, portion about the inventor uh, activities with a one minute uh, uh, promotion of uh, Houston as the innovation capital of the world. I think it's really fun to invent. All right. All right. We have three different types. We have the original Paint Pal. New water meter that is a game-changing technology that allows... You have a total of 12. You got these on the back. I'd like to make this a special uh, invite to Mayor White and to the uh, elected officials and, and business leaders of Houston. We have now twin pillars of invention. We have the Young Inventors Showcase, and here we have the Houston Inventors Association. Houston can be an exporter of innovation. The Houston brand can be an innovation brand. Getting behind these two organizations and events can be the springboard for a national, if not an international, outreach of innovation spearheaded by the Houston business and government community. I'm now going to switch gears and I'm going to talk about FACES, our facial composite software. Uh, and how it's how it's used. The first thing I'm going to do is show you how the software actually works. So here's a functionality. Break.
The next video is going to be um, of a campus safety event that we put on, which is the actual core of what we're um, looking to roll out in your community, in which, we'll, again, we'll donate the two programs, Young Inventors and the Face of Software. We'll get a naming rights sponsor to put on these campus safety events. And this next video is exactly what the campus safety event is all about. We put together uh, Charlie Davis, who's a former Super Bowl winner, with a detective. And Charlie talked about anti-crime, anti-gang, um, anti-drugs, pro-family, pro-cop messaging, along with the NFL stories. And he turned it over to the detective who taught the kids how to use the software and become junior crime fighters. The concept was, is that the charisma of Charlie carried over to the detective and it worked brilliantly. Uh, the kids no longer look at the detective as being just a cop, but hey, this guy knows Charlie Davis. And so I'm going to show you the, the dynamics of the, of the event through the video. And again, this is what we want to put on in your, in your school. I want to thank everyone for taking their time to come here and as we talk about a new program for our police department and something we're also going to introduce to our students at both Alvin and Manville High Schools. I want to thank Charlie Davis, who is the founder of the Charlie Davis Group, a consulting firm that identifies career and personal needs of retired professional athletes. Mr. Davis played for the Pittsburgh Steelers in the early days of the Steel Curtain, as well as the St. Louis Cardinals and the Houston Oilers. We have this opportunity today because Mr. Davis has partnered with IQ Biometrics and FACES to bring local law enforcement agencies software designed to build face composites to help law enforcement agencies identify criminal suspects and more quickly apprehend those who commit crimes. It was started in the University of Montreal. They hand drew 3,000 images to create the software. It's been on a lot of TV shows. America's Most Wanted, it was on CSI Miami, I believe. John Walsh from America's Most Wanted became the spokesman about 10 years ago, and FACES is the leading software. We're going to deploy the software to our supervisors, to our investigator, and to our division commanders. We will have it both uh, in our vehicles and on desktops here in headquarters. It's really going to be a, a big benefit to all of us here at, at the department. We can sit in the car with what is fresh on the, on the victim's mind, 
are the witnesses' mind and draw the pictures right here from the car. The squad car can email it to Channel 13. It can be up within minutes. I think it's going to be a great program for us. I will be using it in my investigations. I did have a software that is basically the same, but I can't figure out how to use it. This is so easy. The Alvin ISD Police Department, in partnership with Mr. Davis and the folks from Faces ID, are teaming up with our students to put this software in our classrooms. At Alvin High School, we will place this crime-fighting software in our forensic sciences class. At Manville High School, we will place this software in our health sciences class. The challenge that we have is that within law enforcement and within the education community, uh, it's very difficult to find the funding for something like this. We came up with what we call the Anti-Crime Awareness Initiative, and Charlie and I really started this thing about nine months ago. Charlie has uh, stepped forward and he's helped find the money to uh, give this donation to y'all, so let's all welcome Charlie. <laughs> this software will put Alvin schools online with the most high-tech systems anywhere in the country. And uh, it, it's just an honor for me to be here and, and present this to you. This is a great pleasure and honor to me to present you with the uh, latest edition of the FACES IQ software. As an instructor, make sure that uh, the kids get on that. <laughs> we have the CSI shows and they've become very popular, so kids are very, very interested in what's going on in the forensic science world. Forensic anthropology is one of the things our kids will be studying in classrooms, and this will help them identify genetic traits, facial characteristics in, in people. We just got the program, but from what we've used it so far, they have loved it. I like how you could actually come up with people's faces, expressions. I think that, you know, it will help the police department a lot in the future. Uh, I hope to see it get put to work, and I like using it, so I think it's a great software to have and use. So when this is in y'all's classrooms, you can see somebody rob a gas station one day and go sit at your computer and build his face up. I think it's wonderful. Kids want to see uh, more technology in the classroom. That's when they get motivated and engaged in, in their lessons. So it's a win-win for all of us. It kind of looks like it. It's a great learning experience because then you get to learn different features from different people's faces and it make you um, visualize more. Plus you had a great subject to work with. <laughs> what I see is the progress that you made in such a short time. I think any time we can introduce technology that makes our jobs easier, it's a win-win for not only the law enforcement agency, but for the communities they serve. We're going to uh, gift each one of you guys today a set of this software. How about that? And we're pleased to be one of the first departments to get the software to utilize in this way. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Not only as a law enforcement tool, but also as an education tool. I'm next going to have a short two-minute video of how FACES is actually used by first responders in the, in the squad car, etc. Um, I think this is important to see. This software gives us the capability so that police officers on the street interviewing victims of crime or interviewing witnesses are able to take the features and characteristics of a suspect and put that into a computer system and get a very close rendition to what that individual looks like, similar to as if we had a sketch artist on the scene in real time, that's very important because your first 24 hours is the most important time of solving crime. Well, let's say I was a witness and I'm yeah. describing to them what this person looked like. The best next thing, instead of me taking a photograph of this individual, is for me to explain to him what this guy looked like. And as we work through it on this computer, when I look at it and say that looks like him, he can immediately take that, download it, send it to the dispatch, to the detectives that are out working on the scene and or if we think that this individual is mobile what we can do is send that information out to other units it's really going to be a, a big benefit to all of us here at, at the department we can sit in the car with what is fresh on the on the victim's mind or the witness's mind and draw the pictures right here from the car the squad car can email it to channel 13 it can be up within minutes so there's some really wonderful features for the software 
I think it's going to be a great program for us. You can actually save it and either print it out, I can have it emailed out, or I can bring up a code that I actually send out to other police departments and they can actually pull the same photo up uh, off of that code. I can't wait for the day that one of these faces composites solves a crime for us based on recognition. And it's all because we have people that gave us the financial opportunity to have this in every car and have it in our police facility as one of our tools to fight crime. I'm next going to show you uh, a couple of documents that go into detail on how faces uh, is used in the classroom. The first is a lesson plan that goes as part of a crime scene investigation uh, uh, lessons. And the second is our lab activity guide, which is 27 pages uh, at length. Uh, first, I'll show you the, um, the lesson plan. Uh, and the part that I wanted to show you, which is of, of uh, a very interesting interest, is on the right here, if you see, it says start game. A game is uh, faces flash for five seconds, it disappears, and the user has to recreate the face. And that um, game has been validated by the National Institute of Health as increasing concentration and focus, uh, which is which is really cool. So I'm now going to show you our 24 page uh, lab guide, 27 page lab guide. Um, which goes into a lot, a lot of detail on how faces can be used. Note that uh, it meets national science education content standards. Um, there's a background. Pre-lab preparation. Uh, it's just a, a very detailed um, tool that you can use. I'm now going to go through, take you through a quick PowerPoint that shows the global reach of our software. This is a presentation that I, that I made to the U.S.-China Innovation Alliance, and the, the important thing that I want to show is uh, is this slide uh, right here, um, which is our current sales international: uh, Scotland Yard, Russia, Guatemala, Sri Lanka, France, Philippines, Mexico, Germany, Puerto Rico, India, and Spain. Um, Here's our social media platform. As you can see, we're on all the elements, Facebook, Twitter, uh, LinkedIn, YouTube, uh, et cetera. Um, here's the story. My wife and I were robbed at our house. We're having an open house and we used the software to uh, uh, sketch the robber and a mugshot showed up and my wife's testimony in the sketch put the guy away for 15 years. Uh, here's a promotional video that was done uh, uh, many, many years ago, but it shows the breadth and depth of the reach of our software when it was first introduced. Uh, it, it's actually quite entertaining. FACES program is an exciting technology. Two weeks ago, we unveiled FACES, a fantastic new computer program. I say it's going to catch lots and lots of criminals. FACES, the computer program that takes the police composite into the 21st century. The most amazing technology here is this. It's called FACES. There's a new high-tech way to turn your description into a photograph for police investigators. En fait, une compagnie québécoise vient en effet de développer un logiciel qui permet, en quelques clics de souris, de dessiner les visages de criminels les plus recherchés. The people who developed this program and actually put these characters into the computer. Il y a un nouveau logiciel qui va nous aider. On vous montre ça. Including this one from Faces. InterQuest is sending 50,000 copies of its software to police departments in the States and Canada. Profiles that could then be fed into this new computer program called FACES.
traces. Uh, briefly, I just want to show you, we actually have a Facebook page that brings both the Young Inventors Showcase and the Faces software together. Uh, we call it the um, Dual Public Safety and Economic Empowerment Initiative. You can look it up on Facebook. It's kind of interesting. Uh, now, just to bring this to a close, I'm going to uh, reinforce what I said earlier about the um, objective of this presentation. Uh, again, it's a Faces Donated, Faces Donation funded by Major Brands campaign. Um, and uh, there's a phase one in which I offer to donate Faces and the Young Inventors Showcase program in its entirety, in their entireties, um, uh, to any community, as long as it is accepted in its full saturation mode, as laid out in the, the Hillsdale presentation, which I can provide. And again, there's no strings attached to either donation. Uh, phase two, we work together to close a naming rights sponsor from a target list of major global brands. My current lead target is Facebook, as they have a localized community funding program that is global. Go to facebook.com slash community slash fund. Scroll down the page to see the local communities they are funding. Number three, communicate that the value of the naming rights completes depend, depend, completely depends on the level of saturation. The greater the saturation, the greater the value of the naming rights. Uh, number four, the initial valuation is based on um, the maximum saturation of faces into uh, the law enforcement, educational, and student versions, uh, which you can go to facialcomposites.com for the pricing of that. We'll just we'll just um, you know pencil out the the total value and then and then go from there. Um, and again, the, the deliverables of the faces and the young inventors is simply um, a deliverable towards the purchase of the naming rights for the campus safety events in the schools. The funding will go to fund the campus safety events in the schools and to underwrite the Young Inventors program, uh, program. Reach me at Greg M at YIAA.org. Um, Greg M at YIAA.org. Uh, thank you for your time, and I look forward to working with you all in the future. Okay, now let's try this again. Apparently, Greg Mysick again. Apparently, I've got 10 minutes left, so I'm going to show two videos. The first is the 2009 Houston Inventors Association trade show, and the second is the John Walsh endorsement video. The Houston Inventors Association is a group of local inventors that get together twice a month and try to help other inventors. This is our third annual inventors trade show. The inventors in the Houston area have an opportunity to come and display their inventions for other people to see. We have a new water meter that is a game-changing technology that allows us to be able to monitor. And this is the Tidy Top. It stands for Tidy Your Desktop. What it does is it helps, it's a glare guard protector to help protect your eyes from eye strain. It also offers pockets. So that... What you see before you today are over 50 inventors, approximately 15 sponsoring organizations, all coming together to showcase their invention, get some publicity, hopefully get some good ideas, make some great contacts. Uh, we have a creative class here in Houston that's bar none the best in the country and some great inventions. This is the paint pal, your buddy in a box. The first level is your paint pan holder, then you have your paint pan, then you have your lid to keep the paint in the paint pan, then you have your tray, the paint brush and paint roller tray, and then you have your lid that goes on top of that. And four clamps that clamp it all together. Most rooms you have to give them two coats of paint. So you paint your first coat, then you gotta rinse out your paint. And see some of the local inventions in the Houston area. My wife decided that instead of me having a heat stroke out there in the uh, 
working in the yard, playing tennis at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. She helped to design this body cooler. You can put ice in each one of these packets. You have a total of 12. You got these on the back, and you have four on the front. And you adjust your cooling. The old way of buckling sandals is you have to put the strap through here and find the little prong. And with mine, all you ever have to do is easy on, easy off. Easy on. Well, without a fear of our paranoia, you know, because that's what you get when you start doing this kind of stuff. You get, you get paranoid about, well, am I doing it the right way? Am I trusting the right people? Am I wasting my time? Am I wasting my time? There's a lot of people here that that can help you. Uh, you just have to ask. And um, everybody wants everybody to succeed. And I actually wish I'd come here a year ago. They've gotten me to the point now that I can. I have my patent. I have it where I can go, you know, show people and I can start marketing it properly. The way that we help inventors market their invention is by giving them information and giving them contacts with other people that can help them market their invention. One of the things we try to do is to teach inventors how to do it inexpensively. It's very easy for an inventor to overspend. They get so enthusiastic about their invention and quite often you get crooked outfits that lead them on. We also try to steer inventors clear from uh, scam organizations that advertise on television and in magazines. They can spend a lot of the inventor's money and not provide any worthwhile services. We've learned. But I, like you, have gone through a lot of the challenges of develop, developing a product. Um, our product that we're going to... We do have speakers that will talk about how they marketed their invention or mistakes that they may have made in marketing their inventions. We also have speakers from different groups in the Houston area that can help inventors and provide uh, It's a nonprofit organization that utilizes engineers that are NASA subcontractors and they provide up to 40 hours of free engineering service. The University of Houston Small Business Development Center uh, can help people with business plans and, and marketing plans. There's a lot of nonprofit organizations in the Houston area, so we're trying to develop closer relationships with those organizations. I came up with the idea of having a meeting. It seems to me that we got off to a very good start. I mean, an idea can be worth nothing or it can be worth hundreds of millions, depending on how you build a business model around it. What is it you're trying to sell? I think the critical thing for any inventor is if he, wants, he or she wants to proceed forward, they have got to get the legal stuff out of the way, the patent application, the provisional patent. We are not attorneys. We don't help them with the application process, but we do maintain a library of materials for inventors to use, and we teach a patent searching class. Before these organizations, they were kind of like ships passing in the dark. It's the first time that everybody has met together and uh, discussed how they could work better together. Because you've got the idea guy, but you need the execution team to take it from idea to, you know, to maturity. With HTC and with... I'm going to wrap up now with the John Walsh endorsement video, which you find entertaining. Again, we're on AMW.com. I don't what know what's AMW? going on over here. <laughs> <AMW. laughs> oh, 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 we're behind the scenes. Sorry, we're on, on a shoot here for Earth yeah, yeah. Most Wanted. This is a very familiar guy to you and me, Bill Sigliano. A friend, a good guy, former prosecutor from Canada, a guy who's been involved with the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, helped him for years. One of those good, good, good guys that moves back. Well, we've known Bill for a long time, and, and Bill is, is the guy who brought us faces. And uh, Bill, tell us how you how you came. Yeah, yeah. With, how did you meet program? Rod Stewart? Right. <laughs> face. Oh, well, we're really, all different faces. We're really proud of our association with uh, America's Most Wanted. We brought faces here. It's used by hundreds of thousands of law enforcement agencies to catch bad guys, developing composites, and then uh, matching them against databases to uh, get get a match to help solve crimes. I mean, John, you were a supporter of FACES from when it, we first got it in 1998. Many police departments don't have forensic sketch artists. So FACES was state-of-the-art technology, and we tried it in my home turf, Broward County, Florida, 
on a horrible rapist. And this was a guy who had kidnapped several girls. Nobody knew who he was. He would steal a car and he would dump it into a lake or into a canal. He, he really had a dangerous MO. And guess who turned him in from the composite, the composite of some of the surviving little girls. He didn't right. kill anybody, fortunately. The little girls were good witnesses. We used faces and his own mother yeah. turned him in. She went, that's my creepy right. son. And boy, he was a bad guy. And I believe that he was going to keep kidnapping little girls until he killed somebody. Faces, home run the first time we used it on the show. We've used Faces for years, and I know just recently we launched a, a police sketch game. Yeah. We encourage everyone to uh, play the game. Um, it uh, helps you uh, be aware of your surroundings. We think everyone's got an important role in fighting crime. The game works by showing you a, a picture of someone that is a person of interest. Right. And we show you the picture for about five to seven seconds, okay. and then we uh, give you some other uh, pictures that we try to match. So it's, it's an observation, it's an awareness game. You pick, it's like a menu system, and then it tells you how well you've done. You can actually make chief, so uh, it, we have a few people that it, have done it, that. It's cool because it's a good way to teach you that if you ever witness a crime, and we have 40 million crime victims in this country every year, it's very important that people know how to remember what a bad guy looks like, especially if you're a crime victim. So it's a good teaching tool. It's a that's great fun. educational tool for everyone. I gotta ask you one more savings. time, and here comes the plug. Where can you find the police sketch game? AMW.com. Please sketch under the feature section. Please play it. Please download it. You'll have a lot of fun. Thanks for your help, Billy. Thanks, John. That's it. Um, one last time. This is again the uh, Faces Donation Fund game plan and you can reach me at um, Greg M at yiaa.org thank you for your time